With the manager application, Tomcat 7 brings a number of improvements in terms of security. So first of all, we've correctly used get and post. Um, previously, we were using get for things that really should have used post, i.e. things that were causing changes on the server. So we, we sorted that out. We've added um, cross-site request forgery protection to the HTML interface. We haven't added it to the text interface because if we put that in, then it makes writing clients to the text interface a lot more difficult. Um, so we've separated out the text interface by moving it to a new URL. And one of the side effects of this is you need to make sure if you want to retain the cross-site request forgery protection that you don't have a user assigned to both the manager role and the manager script role. Actually, I should uh, note that the manager role has been renamed to manager GUI. Um, that's a fairly recent update, and apologies for it not being in the slides. So following on from that, we've actually split the roles up. Normally, um, if you wanted to use the manager GUI interface, then you'd assign just the manager GUI role. Uh, that will automatically get you access to the status pages, but you can, if you want, just give a user access to the status pages by granting access to the status role. We've also added memory leak detection to the manager application. It only works for an application that's been stopped, reloaded, or undeployed. So it's, it doesn't work dynamically whilst the app is running. It just looks for problems when the application stops. In order to detect whether a leak has occurred, it does trigger or attempt to trigger a full garbage collection. So just bear that in mind if you do try using this on a production system. The leak detection is guaranteed not to give you any false negatives. So if it says there are no leaks, then there are no leaks. However, it might give you a false positive. It might identify a leak when one doesn't really exist. So it's always worth using a profiler to identify whether or not you have a um, memory leak if the manager reports that there's probably one there. Available to use with Tomcat 7 if you are prepared to build it from source is a replacement connection pool. It was written by Philip and it's really aimed at environments where you have a high number of database connections being used um, and a, a high concurrent number. So one of the pr issues with Commons DBCP is that it's written to run on Java 1.3, which means it can't take advantage of the concurrency libraries in Java 5. So what that means is that Commons DBCP is single threaded in terms of allocating and returning connections to the pool. So if you have a lot of concurrent requests, all of which are trying to either request a new connection or return an old one, then you can see um, a little bit of a bottleneck with Commons DBCP. The high concurrency connection pool that Philip wrote doesn't have that problem. Um, it's designed to have the same configuration interface as Commons DBCP, and it's very easy to swap between the two. However, at the moment, it is still in development. We haven't had a formal release, but if you want to grab a copy of the source code and build it yourself, then um, by all means, you're free to do so. Please, if, if you do find any issues, then please report those through Bugzilla, and we'll get them fixed. Tomcat 7 is also significantly easier to embed. Um, this is based on some work that Costin did, and if you've ever tried to embed Tomcat previously, you'll know that you have to write a reasonable amount of code to do so, and you, you can take the um, embedded class from the standard Tomcat distribution as a starting point, but it's still relatively complex. What you can now do in Tomcat 7 is just create a Tomcat instance in just a few lines of code using the new org Apache Catalina startup Tomcat class. Tomcat also uses this as the basis for a lot of its unit tests. And one of the things we're now able to do in Tomcat 7 is add a lot more unit tests. And if you've been following the development, you will have seen us doing that as we've gone through fixing various bugs. With this embedded configuration, you can either take a bare bones instance, so that 
hasn't really had any configuration settings at all, and then it's up to you to configure things like the default servlet or the JSP servlet if you want to use it. Or you can set up an instance that just uses the standard default, and then we'll, we'll use the configuration that um, Tomcat would normally get from the default web.xml. It is provided in a smaller number of jars to make it easier to work with, and it's, it is also available via Maven. The version in Maven at the moment um, is a pre-release snapshot. One of the things on my list of things to do this week is to actually upload the 7.0.0 beta release to Maven, and that, as I say, should be happening later this week. Looking at some of the other changes we've made in Tomcat 7, um, we've added protection for session fixation. This is another thing that has been backported to Tomcat 6 and Tomcat 5. And essentially what that does is it just changes the session ID when a user authenticates. That shouldn't cause any problems, but it's just something to be aware of if you've got an application that expects the session ID to be constant. Um, with this session fixation protection, then that's not going to be the case. Um, it's generally a bad idea anyway to rely on the session ID being constant because if you're in a load balanced environment, then the session ID can change as you move around nodes in the cluster. We've added a number of uh, new formatters and handlers for the Java to logging implement implementation. There's the one line logger that will output log messages on a single line rather than two, which makes it the log messages easier to process via automated tools. There's the verbatim log formatter. That's more for Tomcat's internal use, but it's there if you want to use it. And that will literally log the log message you provide and absolutely nothing else. So if you need a way of um, outputting stuff to a log file without any additional formatting at all, then that's the way to do it. And there's an asynchronous file handler. One of the issues with Java Util logging is that whilst it does buffer log messages, if you happen to be the request that generates the log message that causes the buffer to be flushed, then the buffer is flushed on that same thread. So if it takes, if there's a short pause whilst the log buffer is written out to disk, then whichever request triggered that is going to pause whilst it's written out to disk. So in order to avoid those pauses, you can use the asynchronous file handler, and what that will do is that will use an entirely separate thread to take the log buffer and then write that out to disk. And in that way, web application threads don't ever experience any pauses as a result of having to flush the buffer. Internally, we've done an awful lot of code cleanup. We've switched to using generics. We've removed a lot of unused code. We switched string buffer for string builder, although it's debatable whether or not that might give any real improvement, um, but it's a best practice, so we've done it. Uh, we've made loggers static and final where possible. That should give a marginal, and I do mean marginal, um, reduction in memory usage. And we've reduced the code duplication in the connectors. That should lead to more reliable, more consistent behavior between the connectors. And it also makes maintenance easier because now when we have to fix a bug in the connectors, we only have to fix it in one place rather than the five that we used to have to. As a result of last year's Google Summer of Code project, we've started the process of switching over from valves to filters. The long-term aim is to remove valves entirely and depend just on filters. And the main driver there is to remove the duplication of logic. There is an awful lot of similarity between valves and filters, and if we could remove valves, then that would just simplify the processing chain considerably.